Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about forgiveness and reconciliation. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to define the various processes such as relational transgressions, remediation, forgiveness, and reconciliation. You should also be able to understand the potential evolution of how these processes impact and work together, as well as understand and identify the strategies for these various processes. Finally, you should be able to explain the potential benefits of forgiveness specifically. First, let's talk about how these processes that we'll discuss today work together. Once someone commits a relational transgression, which is not adhering to an understood or explicit or implicit rule in a relationship, for example, cheating, one option is to terminate the relationship. However, after a relational transgression, such as cheating on a partner occurs, we also have the ability to work towards staying together or work towards uh, creating an existing relationship. And that first step in the process is through what's called remediation. Remediation is when the person that committed the transgression tries to repair the relationship. Now, sometimes this is successful, sometimes it's not. Just because we try to remediate if we are the transgressor does not mean we're successful in so. And so an option is always that we could still end our relationship. Another option is if we're successful in remediation, we could seek and hopefully receive forgiveness from our partner. Now what's important is that forgiveness is not the same thing as reconciliation. Because we can forgive someone but still decide to not engage in a future relationship with them. So even after we communicate forgiveness, there's the potential that we don't continue the relationship in its previous form, and so relational termination is still an option. However, forgiveness does make us more susceptible to potentially reconciling with a partner or getting back together. So we do have the opportunity after forgiveness to reach towards or communicate strategically in hopes to reconcile with a partner. Now what's important is that all of these processes can and often do build upon one another, but there's always the option that this will look unique to your own circumstance and you might end up in relational termination with a friend or with a romantic partner throughout this process as we've identified. Let's talk about forgiveness. Now since forgiveness is the overall topic that we'll discuss today, there's Probably not a shock to you that much like some of the other processes we've talked about, there's been a lot of debate on how to define this term. We've talked about this with conflict and we've talked about this a bit with power, but defining forgiveness has not always been agreed upon by past scholars. For example, some think of it as a cognitive process that consists of letting go of feelings of revenge and desires to retaliate against a relational partner and changes his or her feelings about that particular transgression or transgressor. Those scholars who take a cognitive def definition to forgiveness say that it really is a cognitive process that can only be achieved once we let go of feelings to retaliate or try and get even with a partner. Now what's difficult about this definition is that we don't know if these feelings will come back in the future. So if this is the requirement for this or something to be considered forgiveness, this requires that we must eliminate all those desires to seek revenge or retaliate. Others take a communicative approach to defining forgiveness. The idea of it's really how we communicate about forgiveness which leads to particular outcomes, such as reconciliation. So even if it's a cognitive process that starts within our cognitions, it's how we communicate about forgiveness through nonverbal and verbal means after a transgression or hardship that is more significant and most important. Finally, some include a behavioral focus to defining forgiveness. It's dependent on behavioral outcomes. Maybe we can't evaluate whether our cognitive uh, processes have actually gotten away with or not focused on revenge and retaliation, but we can evaluate the behaviors such as returning to our normal nonverbal behavior with a partner or our behavioral outcome of reconciling with a partner that we saw in the previous slide. A lot of times forgiveness scholars will take multiple of these definitions and combine them to create their own. 
Now, before we get to the process of forgiveness, let's talk about relational transgressions, as these often predicate the need for forgiveness. This is considered an extremely problematic situation where some core rule in a relationship has been violated, and this usually results in high emotional states. Now, a relational transgression can be breaking some kind of rule in a relationship. Sometimes these rules are explicit, and sometimes these rules are implicit. For example, if you cheat on your husband or wife, that is an explicit rule that you have broken, as it might be outlined in your vows. However, oftentimes our relationships are governed by implicit rules, such as a friend assuming that their best friend won't talk poorly about them. When they hear they're being talked poorly about by others, then they feel that this friend has broken this implicit rule, and therefore they perceive it as a relational transgression. Now what's difficult with transgressions is that oftentimes, oftentimes our rules are fairly vague. Are we, in fact, a monogamous couple, or are we still in the dating stage, early dating stage, where we can see other people? So if you're dating more than one person, is that considered a relational transgression because you haven't had that conversation? Or was it implicit or just assumed that you would only date one person at a time? So oftentimes we experience relational transgressions that the actual transgressor might not be aware that they're committing. Now, once a relational transgression happens, the transgressor, transgressor has the option to remediate. This is their attempts to repair after they're aware of a transgression. Now, there's a lot of options or strategies when it comes to how a transgressor tries to remediate, and some are things that we probably could think about off the top of our heads. For example, you could apologize or concede to a partner if you're the one that committed the transgression. You're doing this in hopes to somewhat repair or put the relationship back together. There's also appeasement, so giving in, accommodating, appeasing your partner, trying to show them other areas of your relationship that you are good at, buying them flowers, uh, telling them that they're, they're worth more to you than you could ever imagine. You're trying to appease to make up for your transgression. A common option is an explanation, so you're providing an explanation for why the transgression existed. There are really two types of, trans of explanations, excuses and justifications. If you're offering an explanation that includes excuses, oftentimes you're focused on minimizing responsibility for the transgression, such as, I was so drunk I wasn't in control of my own behavior. Justifications really focus more so on minimizing the severity of the transgression. For example, if you grabbed coffee with an ex and your current partner found out about it, and your explanation was that it wasn't that big of a deal because you just happened to pass each other at the same coffee shop and you grabbed lunch there, then that's a justification. You're saying that that transgression was not as bad as it seems because you're trying to minimize the severity. You also have the option to completely deny the transgression, especially if you don't evaluate this as a transgression because it was an implicit rule that you supposedly broke. You might flat out deny that you committed that transgression. Another option you always have, especially in conflict, is to avoid or evade the partner. So not talk about the topic, or whenever they try to engage with you about this transgression, you sweep it under the rug or you change the subject. Lastly, an option is relationship talk, where as the transgressor, you try to put the relationship as the backdrop to make them understand the transgression. So saying things like, we love each other enough to get through this. I know that this transgression happened, but it can make us stronger. And lastly, meta talk. This is explicit talk about how the transgression has affected the relationship. So as the transgressor, you might try to remediate by saying, I know you've lost, I've lost your trust, but I'm going to try and get it back. What's important about remedial strategies is that some of these are successful and others are not. Oftentimes, especially if the transgression was particularly severe, we might combine a lot of these strategies together. Now, if you're successful in remediation, you could also seek forgiveness from your partner. And there are many ways that we communicate forgiveness. 
One way we communicate forgiveness is through explicit forgiveness. This is often when we are explicating that we do in fact forgive someone. So this can lower uncertainty. This can provide the most clarity when it comes to forgiving someone because you're explicating that you have in fact forgiven them for a transgressor, transgression. There's also the ability to return to normal. So this is often called nonverbal display. Once you forgive someone, even if you don't ex explicate it through your communication, it might be implied that you've been forgiven because you return to your normal nonverbal functioning. We're back holding hands. We're back sitting close together once again. We have resumed our, our routine when it comes to our nonverbal display. We're communicating again. So if the transgression specifically was not uh, extremely severe, simply returning to your everyday nonverbal interaction might communicate that you've been forgiven. There's also this concept of conditional forgiveness. Conditional forgiveness, and as you'll read in some of your readings for this module, is utilized specifically, or in most cases, when there's been a very severe transgression. Conditional forgiveness means that you will only offer forgiveness to someone if they fulfill a certain condition. So you could say to a partner, I'll forgive you if you promise never to see her again. That is a conditional forgiveness way to communicate forgiveness. I'm only going to grant you forgiveness if you fulfill this behavior or act. And we know we oftentimes utilize conditional forgiveness because it tries to protect us from harm in the future. We try to safeguard ourselves by saying, if you don't do this, then I take my forgiveness back. You can imagine that those who take a psychological or cognitive approach to defining forgiveness might not evaluate conditional forgiveness as forgiveness because there's still that idea of retaliation here. Another option is to minimize what the transgression was. So a lot of people in research said that they didn't really know that they were forgiven until their partner could make fun of it, could laugh at this one-time perceived transgression. Now, it's important to note that minimization is rarely utilized or appropriate for severe transgressions. But if you were mad at your friend for a little white lie or something small, and later on you joke about it, that might communicate to you that that transgression has been forgiven. Lastly, you have the option for a larger discussion of what the transgression was and how you are going to offer forgiveness. Now, typically a discussion format or a discussion strategy for offering forgiveness utilizes some of these other options as well. And you can always use multiple ones of these. Now, if you're successful in forgiveness, that oftentimes is essential in creating an environment open to reconciliation. Reconciliation is a behavioral process in which we take actions to restore a relationship or create a new relationship following forgiveness. Now again, forgiveness does not guarantee reconciliation, but forgiveness could be and oftentimes is essential in creating an environment open to reconciliation. So there's a lot of strategies in how we can reconcile with a partner as well. One pre-strategy is called setting the stage. If we want to get back with a partner, we might do a little bit of investigative work to make sure that they're open to getting back together. We might look at their social media presence to see if they've moved on to another partner. We might ask our friends about them, if they are mentioning us. And all of these things we do in hopes to make it to where we are certain that this person is also open to reconciling because we don't like being vulnerable. Another option for reconciliation strategies is explanation and disclosure. This is the larger conversation of why the transgression happened, but how we remediated and forgave one another and how that led to a positive outcome. So oftentimes explanation disclosure involves talking about this entire process and how that has made you susceptible to being a good partner again. There's also the inclusion of relationship referencing. Relationship referencing oftentimes means that you are referring back to a positive time or positive memories you had with a partner. You are using this as a tactic to tell them that you can get to that positive place once more. 
So you're referencing the positive parts of the relationship in hopes that they will want to get back with you to reach those positive outcomes again. Of course, a future-based reconciliation strategy is offering a promise. So I promise not to do this behavior in the future. I promise to never engage in that transgression. And again, promises, much like conditional forgiveness, uh, tries to help us be more certain about the potential future in our relationship. There's also vulnerable appeals, telling someone that you're so sad without their friendship, that you don't think that you can function without them as a romantic partner. You can't see your future without them. And oftentimes we use vulnerable appeals along with some of these other strategies all at once. And lastly is a direct request. Oftentimes these strategies end with a direct request to get back together. So this is exactly as it sounds. I am asking to get back together. I am asking if we can start a relationship again or if we can start over as friends. You're being direct in what your hope is for reconciliation. Now lastly, let's talk about the, the benefits of forgiveness specifically, because there's been a lot of research on the various outcomes of forgiving communication. Now we know that there are mental, physical, and even relational benefits. Some mental benefits of offering someone forgiveness or forgiving someone. It no longer makes you suppress emotions. Oftentimes, if we are evaluating whether we're going to forgive someone, we're holding in a lot of hostility. We're holding in a lot of negative emotions that can fester and cause us anxiety. This also means if we offer someone forgiveness, that we let go of some of those emotions through our forgiveness communication, through that larger discussion, and that can actually lower our anxiety and lower our stress. This also could restore our positive feelings about ourselves. We know when we offer forgiveness that we not only think it's important in the relationship, but we feel pretty good about ourselves in that we were able to forgive someone after a transgression. There's also many physical benefits that have been noted in research on forgiveness. Once we let go of those suppressed emotions and our anxiety lowers, there is positive physiological attributes there. That means that we have lower levels of pain. If we're harboring anger, if we're harboring resentment towards someone and not forgiving them, that can make us be more susceptible to pain. It also, forgiveness, can make us sleep better. It can improve our cardiovascular health, lower our blood pressure, help us recover faster from ailments, injury, and illness. All these things, again, relate to what we see in no longer suppressing emotions and therefore having a positive outcome on anxiety and stress. Lastly, it's important to note the relational benefits of forgiveness. There's dyadic benefits to forgiveness. Dyadic meaning between two people. If we offer each other forgiveness in a romantic relationship, and later on down the road we experience conflict that's or a transgression that's necessary of forgiveness again, we might be more likely to access that type of communication. Now, of course, there are times where people forgive others when that shouldn't have happened or it's unwarranted forgiveness. But if forgiveness is constructive to your relationship, you're more likely to use it in the future if another transgression occurs. So that can actually make you more resilient or that ability to adapt, thrive, and survive after adversity such as a transgression. We've also seen in research, specifically my own research with Dr. Waldron and Dana Clover and Don Braithwaite, about the systematic positive benefits of forgiveness. We studied step families and saw that if there was forgiveness communicated between a stepchild and a step parent, that not only benefited them as a dyad, but it positively benefited how the entire family system communicated. Now they were closer with their other step siblings because they repaired or forgave a step parent. Now their biological parent was more likely to talk to the, both of those members of the family together because they had that forgiveness. So that's something that expands this dyadic resilience to the entire system like we talked about in the first chapter with systems theory. Lastly, Dr. Waldron specifically has looked at how offering or communicating forgiveness can help us renegotiate the morality in our relationship. If we've communicated forgiveness, that often means that we've had a discussion with our partner about what we need in a relationship, 
about what we evaluate to be a transgression or not a transgression. Oftentimes we've discussed in that communicative forgiveness uh, dialogue about what we consider to be implicit and explicit rules in our relationship. So by offering forgiveness, we can actually reaffirm what our shared morals are and therefore hopefully stick to them more in the future.